Hi everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Cyclidé. Today I'll be talking about the Malawi Hap Aquarium. Before we get started, I want you to take a little second and click that subscribe button. I've been getting a lot of new subscribers lately, welcome to the channel, and this is so encouraging. So thank you to everyone who already subscribed. I also wanted to say a little thank you to all of you who have bought the Cyclid Geek t-shirt. Every sale that I make gives me a little bit of money that goes towards this huge life project that I have, and it's really encouraging. And thank you so much to all of you who have bought it. If you haven't done it yet, well, the link is right in the video description. Get yours today and look and feel as fabulous as I do. But do that after the video, because you want to learn about haps. So back to the subject. Haplochromis are the Olonokara's fancy cousin. They are an African cichlid from Lake Malawi. They are renowned as one of the more peaceful African cichlids. They come in a variety of colors and shapes and sizes. It's really hard with the naked eye just to look at a fish and tell that it's a haplochromis. So in Lake Malawi, you have two big groups. You have the Mbunas and the non-Mbunas, which include the Olonokara that I already made a video about. There are the Predators and the Haplochromis. So the Haplochromis is a subgroup of the non-Mbuna group of the African cichlids in Lake Malawi. And why is it called Haplochromis? So when the scientists were identifying these fish, they had put all of the Haplochromis subgroup, all of them went into one genus. So you know the genus in Haplochromis, there's let's say Copadzichromis and etc. <laughs> there, there are like 15 of them. All of these were classified as Haplochromis. So instead of Nimbochromis venustus, it was Haplochromis venustus. Copadzichromis borlei was Haplochromis borlei. You can actually see that if any of you have any old books, I have one from Axel Rod, and all the names are Haplochromis, Haplochromis, Haplochromis. Actually, some of the predators, such as the Dzimidzochromis, were classed as Haplochromis as well. Others, like the some species of Chilotilapia, were not. Those fish that were classified as Haplochromis were later on classified as predators. What about the name Haplochromis? Scientists chose this group of fishes named the Haplochromis. They went with a Greek root. So Haplo means single. And Chromis, you're, you see this a lot in fish names, <laughs> well, it means fish. So yeah, Haplochromis means single fish. Why single? Well, it's not because their Tinder profile didn't get any swipes. It's actually because when the scientists were identifying these fish in the 1970s, they didn't have access to them as they do now. So the only fish they saw that were they were able to take out of the lake were either uh, the more monochromatic ones, especially one of the first ones was the Dzimidzochromis, which we know is a gorgeous fish, but it's blue and with a bit of red. The colors are pretty basic, especially if you're comparing to, let's say, peacocks. Fish the scientists had access to were either these monochromatic ones or others that people brought them, but they didn't bring them alive. So they would only have access to uh, preserved dead or sometimes years dead fish, which, let's face it, the colors, they had started to fade. And also in the Dimidiochromis, they usually they only have one line. So they're like, oh, it's a single fish with single proprieties, single color, single line. Let's face it, it means basic. I mean, you can't use these characteristics for, let's say, the Nimbochromis. But when they discovered this fish, the name was already there. So they went with Haplochromis. <laughs> Certain species actually need bigger than 75 gallons. So do your research on the fish that you want to buy before putting it in your aquarium. If you keep haps in an aquarium that is too small, at first, before they get too big for the aquarium, they'll still feel stuck. Even though they're a good size, they won't be very comfortable in that small aquarium. So they can get aggressive, they'll start running after fish. So once the fish gets too big for the tank, there is this Famous misconception that the fish will only grow to the size of the aquarium. Well, that's half true, 
because yes, they'll grow to the size of the aquarium, they won't grow bigger, but they will suffer immensely from dwarfism. Dwarfism for fish, it means that the body stopped growing, but when the body stops growing because it's constrained, the internal organs continue to grow. Your fish can get extremely sick from this and you lose many years on their lifespan. Be mindful about tank size for these fish. So get a big tank. This is the easiest cichlid scape. Basically just do what you want. You already have the big enough tank. The classic look for the Haplochromis aquascape is a rocky habitat. You don't need a million decorations such as you did with the Embunas. For plants, Anubias and Java ferns are the only plants that will thrive in this aquarium. Not mentioning the water parameters, which cannot house any other plants, Haps are aquascape artists, and they will not be shy to uproot plants that they do not like. Anubias and Java ferns should be tied to a rock or to a branch or coral. They should not be planted with their roots in the substrate as they could rot like this. So if they're tied up to a rock, they cannot uproot them. This is us outsmarting our fish. For substrate, as with all other African cichlids, use pH augmenting substrates such as aragonite and I also love Carib Sea Sahara sand. I like the finer sands because they are a lot easier to clean. The gunk does not get into the cracks of the sand. You just siphon the top layer. Steer clear though of the ultra fine sands because they're so light, the haps are so big, a lot of that sand will end up in the filter. As with all other Lake Malawi cichlids, Haplochromis are mouth brooders. The female will hold the fry in her mouth for up to four weeks. If the female is holding, I highly suggest that you don't isolate her in a little isolation box. Usually halves will breed later in life and will be a lot bigger. So if you put a big fish in an isolation box, they can't move. So there is no water going on their scales. They will dry up and it can really impact their health negatively. You're better off leaving her in the aquarium. She will spit out her fry there or near her due date, you can move her into a small tank that where she will be able to spit her fish out. To set up this small tank, I have a great video about sponge filters where I explain exactly how to do this. Go check it out after this one. Although as a general rule of thumb, these fish are omnivores. Omnivore is such a big word. For instance, you have those utakas who feed off of zooplankton. You also have some that feed off invertebrates, fish larvae, or even little fish fry, you have some piscivores in there as well. Every species of haplochromis has their own different diet. Feed your haps omnivore and or carnivore pellets in the morning and feed them flakes at night. Always get high quality foods for your fish. Today, most low quality foods are even the same price as the higher quality ones such as North Fin Cichlid Formula, which is the one that I feed to all of my fish. That gets them nice and robust, keeps them healthy a long, long time. I feed them a mix of the Cichlid Formula as well as the Jumbo Formula. And for my really big ones, I even have the Carnivore Formula. Once a week, as a treat, you can feed your hap some frozen food, such as mysis or krill, uh, you can also get some brine shrimp if you have some really small haps. Certain species of haps even eat melanoids, which are these disgusting little gray snails. And usually pet shops will probably have them in one aquarium, um, not because they chose, but just because they got infested with it. Uh, if you want, even in my fish store, I just give them away or they will probably sell them for you for very cheap if you need any. How could you know exactly what your species eats in the wild? Well, once you have their name, Google it. Haps are a schooling fish in the wild. In the aquarium, you should be able to keep them in little schools of, let's say, four fish. Many people, though, have had success with couples of this fish. It is not as complicated to keep as, let's say, the Mbunas, where the male will definitely get way too aggressive towards the female. In the haps, if ever it happens, just add more females and other males 
just to dissipate the aggressivity. As with all cichlids, there's no magical rule. These are living fish with complex behaviors. So once you add a new fish to your tank or preferably many new fish at once, check it out, make sure none of your fish are too aggressive towards the other. Just look at your aquarium and keep an eye on your new fish as well as your old fish to make sure that everyone is living harmoniously. Taps are your jam? Make a full hap tank. You can keep them either in schools of let's say four of different species or you can even just make a male only tank which is sublime. This way you only get the most colorful specimens and every fish you add is a piece of art. Haps are compatible with their fancy cousins, the Oronocara or the Peacocks. You can create a male-only tank or you can put schools of haps with male-only peacocks or schools of haps with schools of peacocks. It's really as you prefer. Most haps and imbunas have way too different a diet. Most imbunas are herbivores, so they are not compatible together. Certain exceptions can apply because there are insectivore embunas, such as the yellow lab or Labidochramis caerellus and the Pseudotrophius cabro. Embunas are pretty tough, they're more aggressive than the haps, so just check them out to make sure that everything is harmonious. So you want to know what the 14 species of haps are? Well, I'll just put the list right in the video description. Go check that out. The ones with the little star next to their name is either because it's disputed or certain species of that genus are in the predators uh, subgroup. A lot of research went into that list, so I really hope you enjoy it. Do you have haps in your aquarium? Which ones do you have? Which ones do you love? Which ones are you looking for that you cannot find? Tell me about it right in the comments section. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, there's plenty more where that came from. Subscribe to the channel. I upload a new video on every Thursday. If you want these fabulous Cichlid Geek t-shirts and support this channel and all the work that I put in it, you can get yours in the link that is in the video description. Thanks again to everybody who has bought some yet and to come. You guys are the best. You're the real MVPs. If you want more fish stuff in between my videos, well, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. You can even buy aquatic plants online. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.